Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to discuss current affairs of 3rd October 2023. So what are the current affairs we are going to discuss in this session that will be important from your UPSC point of view and even from your SPSC point of view. And even if you are preparing for any other competitive examinations, current affairs plays a major role. And we are going to see the current affairs which are important from our examination point of view. So don't skip this video. So watch the video from first to last so that you will be getting a lot of insights regarding how to connect our dynamic with the static syllabus. Is that clear? So let us see the first hour Delhi edition of the Hindu paper and there we will be pointing out which are the articles important from our examination point of view. And we are going to see the perspectives in which you have to think about that topic. So not just reading the things which are given in these articles in newspaper that will be not at all helpful for your examination. So you have to think beyond, you have to think out of box. So I will make you learn how to think out of box. Okay. So the first important topic in this page is Medicine Nobel Prize 2023. And for next four to five days, we will be getting articles regarding this Nobel Prize. For example, today in news, it is about medicine. Tomorrow, it may be chemistry or physics. Okay, like that. So here, this article which is talking about Nobel Prize in medicine in this 2023 year. So two persons are selected for this Nobel Prize. So one from Hungary. Another from America. So one from Hungary and another from America. So what they did? So they played a very important role in development of mRNA vaccine for this COVID-19. Right? So this, uh, this COVID-19 which affected almost all the countries equally. Not only rich, not only poor. But almost all the countries had been affected. So at that time, we went for speeding up of R&D, research and development and we came up with this vaccine within a very less time. So in that mRNA vaccine development, these two persons, they played a very key role. So here actually this person, she is belonging to this Hungary and she is the 13th woman to win this Nobel Prize. Okay. And now let us try to see some facts regarding this topic. Just you have to see the names if you are preparing for any other computer examination. And you have to see for what? It is for mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. And here you have to know what is this mRNA. So RNA is nothing but ribonucleic acid which is, which is nothing but genetic material. So in genetic material we will be having DNA and as well as RNA. DNA is double stranded and RNA is single stranded. And in this RNA, we will be having different types. For example, mRNA, tRNA, rRNA, right? So here, tRNA is very important regarding this protein synthesis. And even mRNA is also very important in this protein synthesis process. tRNA is called as transfer RNA. mRNA is called as messenger RNA, which will be playing an important role in protein synthesis. Okay, so here you have to know what is this mRNA. And you have to know about some facts regarding this mRNA vaccine and how it will be working. So these are the things that you have to remember regarding this topic and these are some perspectives that you need to think about. Is it clear? And next one is at 36 percentage EBC that is economically backward classes largest group in Bihar shows caste study. So recently caste based study caste based survey or study which conducted in Bihar and this article which reveals the data of that caste based census so it says that especially in Bihar OBC category percentage is 27.13 and extremely backward class includes 36.01 percentage and scheduled cast include 19.65, scheduled tribe include 1.68 and unresolved is 15.52. So if you are from Bihar, you have to see this data. Okay, and EBC nothing but they are extremely backward 
classes. So this is very important. And especially from this article, you have to know about what is this caste census. And when we came with this caste census for the first time, and you have to see which is the recent caste census in our country and whether the data is published or not. And even you have to think why we need this type of studies. So what is the use? So in India, government is, is implementing a lot of welfare schemes based on caste. For example, up upliftment of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and even skill development. So most of the schemes came up by the government as affirmative action as affirmative action so affirmative action is nothing but to provide some help to this backward people to come forward to mingle with this common society or mainstream society right so here if you are having data then only we can come up with this affirmative action so if there is no data means government cannot implement this scheme so right so for that this art this data is very important and these are the perspectives from this topic and you can move on to the city page i found nothing important from the city page and even the states page also there is nothing much important so most of the articles are political articles because of elections okay they are not they will be not bringing any benefit to you so don't waste much time so you can directly move on to this editorial page so here this article is important that is capturing the rains so actually recently IMD came up with a forecast that in month of September we got good rainfall. So because of this rainfall which happened in September that had been filled the deficit that we faced in month of August. So in August we had a very less rainfall and in month of September yes we have good rainfall and what are the deficit that we observed in this August that had been filled by this September. So this is the thing which said by our IMD. So now this article says that so there is no proper okay, there is no proper thing like uh, we can't estimate proper rainfall which will be happening in the next year or the uh, next next year like that. Okay. So because of this always we will be seeing unpredictability. So there will be unpredictability in monsoon rainfall. So even though we have the prediction tools, but sometimes we have El Nino, sometimes we have La Nina, right? So because of this, yes, we can't predict this monsoon and because of this uneven rainfall will be seen. So because of this uneven rainfall, which sector is affected more? So that is nothing but our agriculture sector, so which is primary sector, which will be affecting more. So because of this, this article says that we need to have all weather insurance so we need to have this all weather insurance to protect farmers from this global climate vagaries okay so this is the idea of this article and we are going to see that in detail and next topic is the narrative of development and populism so here you have to focus on the keyword that is populism so you have to understand this theory, what is this populism and how it is undermining democracy. So how it is undermining democracy. And I want to give you homework. Here is what measures can be taken here. So you have to let me know what are the measures can be taken. After seeing this, how this populism is affecting the democracy of the country. Okay, and if you move on. In this page, opinion page, there is an article regarding building bricks for future. So you have to see some basic facts regarding this bricks. Okay, bricks include Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. And there are some new members you are going to add in this bricks that is called as bricks plus. So here you have to see what are the issues which are facing by this or what are the challenges which are facing by this BRICS? You have to know that. And even you have to know what can be measures taken. Okay, so what can be the measures that can be taken to address these challenges? And even you can know about some basic facts regarding this BRICS. 
and if we move on there is one more interesting article and this article we discussed already regarding this vibrio cholera so here world reported twice as many cholera cases in 2022 as in 2021 says who so there is increased number of epidemics of cholera is seen so recently in our sunday's newspaper there is one article like it says that yes we can see drug resistant bacteria drug resistant bacteria so this cholera is caused by bacteria that is vibrio cholerae so this is resistant so because of this it is not uh, not affecting by even use of antibiotics that is leading to epidemics so here you have to know like what are the causes of this cholera and what are the signs and the symptoms so what is the treatment and if there is any vaccine is present or not and the important cause of this cholera here is in this image you can see that is contamination of food and water so because of this contamination of food and water we can see the spread of this cholera will be happens okay so here this article says that so who weekly epidemiological record says that world reported more than twice as many cases of cholera as in 2022 that had happened in this 2021 there is increasing of cholera cases okay so this is very very important and now i'll just move on in this text and context there is one article it is regarding counting deaths in india's prisons okay there is increasing of deaths are happening in prisons so what are the reasons here so the first one is because of illness because of natural causes like for example aging and because of mental stress and because of assault in prisons and even now this article says that because of increased suicides and even custodial deaths are also happening So these are the some common reasons for the increasing of deaths in prisons. So here you can see like in UP we have lot of high number of cases of four thirty nine. So you can see your state where it stands. So our state is Telangana here, so it is having the less number of deaths. So it is somewhat good news for me. So you have to see where your state stands. So especially in this northeastern part, there is no data, and even in this area, northern part. So rest you can get the data, so you can see that. Okay, and first let us try to see the analysis of these topics, and later on once again we'll come back to this news page. Is that clear? Are you getting bored? So please don't get bored. So we are going to learn more interesting things because current affairs is very important. So first topic is Medicine Nobel 2023 goes to Dio that is two people who paved the way for mRNA covid vaccines and this topic is important from your GS3 under your science and technology and this topic is important from your prelims is it clear so who are those persons so first one is Hungarian biochemist that is Katalin Karko and next one is american physician scientist drew weisman so announcing the names on monday by this royal swedish academy of science so they said that they got because they worked for this rna mrna vaccines so those studies which run by these two people that led to the development of this mrna vaccines so which are working against covid 19 and if you see details it says that So the citation mentions that pandemic shows the effect mRNA vaccines had on its evolution, as well as how this global disaster became an opportunity for this vaccine technology to showcase its potential. So because of this COVID nineteen, almost every countries they speed up their research and development, and they came up with a lot of vaccines. 
So one such effective vaccine here is mRNA vaccine. So mRNA it stands for messenger RNA. So mRNA is nothing but it is type of a molecule that carry instructions from DNA to the cell cytoplasm and this instructions will be taken by the cell and they will produce protein. That means mRNA plays an important role in protein synthesis in body. It will be helpful in protein synthesis. So in the late 1980s scientists they realized that mRNA could become the basis for the new kind of vaccines. So the proteins that could be something produced by the virus they are called as spike proteins. So spike proteins are nothing but this is the body of this COVID-19 virus and on this we will be having this type of structures. So these structures are called as spikes or spike proteins of the SARS coronavirus. So what is mRNA? mRNA is nothing but messenger RNA. As I said in the nuclear material we have DNA and RNA. DNA is double standard and RNA is single standard and this RNA which is involving in protein synthesis and mRNA which is made from DNA template during the process of transcription and the role of mRNA it is to carry protein information from the DNA in a cell's nucleus to cell cytoplasm okay so it will be carrying this uh, information from DNA so where this DNA is there for example this is cell and inside the cell we have nucleus so inside the nucleus we have this DNA RNA right so from here inside the cell so here it will be ha we are having the water that is called as cytoplasm so from here the information is taken to here and here we will be having ribosomes so these ribosomes plays a very important role in the production of proteins so here the information will be taken from the DNA to the cytoplasm will be taken by this messenger RNA okay so this is about this thing and next important one here is mRNA vaccines so in this mRNA vaccines so we are introducing a piece of mRNA and this mRNA which corresponded to the viral protein and actually a small piece of this protein which found in the outer membrane of this COVID-19 that is spike protein and by using this mRNA we are producing the viral protein okay so actually in our normal immune system so how it works is like whenever any foreign body which is coming into our body that is called as antigen so against that antibodies will be generated so here we are introducing mRNA of spike protein of COVID-19 to the body so that our body will be generating the antibodies against that so whenever actually whenever infection will be attacking or whenever this COVID-19 is attacking so already in our body we will be having ready-made antibodies and they will be fighting against this antigen so that we will be having a good immunity okay so this is about this topic and now let us see next topic it is about 36 percentage of extremely backward class largest group in Bihar says this caste study so here you have to know about some facts regarding this caste census and why we need this caste and this topic is important from your polity which comes under your GS paper too and this type of topics will be important from your mains from not your prelims so if you see context it says that months away from this Lok Sabha election 2024 so Bihar government released a report of a caste survey and this is conducted in the state. So this caste survey says that it's only compiled data, no analysis of it has been yet done. So only the data that we collected but we didn't do any analysis till now. But on this October 2nd, it is Gandhi Jayanti, right? Yesterday, yesterday they found that it is auspicious day to release the data and finally the data of this caste census had been released by this Bihar government and if you see some details the report said that other backward classes they are about 27 percentage and extremely backward contains like 36 percentage scheduled cost 19 percentage and ST is 1.6 percentage and upper caste they makes about 15.5 percentage and Hindus total amount uh, total population of Hindus in this Bihar is about 82 percentage around and Muslims is 17.7 percentage and total population of Bihar here is 13 crore so I think many students are from Bihar right so you have to see this topic it is very important 
And now let us see some facts regarding this caste census. So caste census is nothing but we are including the caste wise tabulation in India's population belonging to all the caste. Primarily we have OBCs not just SCs and STs. In 1952 census the first separate data which is seen on scheduled caste and scheduled tribes it was published and the first caste census data released in 1931. And 2011 census even though had caste census data was not released. So actually what this is saying that yes in this caste census so whatever the data we are collecting under this decennial census so there will be one column will be added so in that column we will be adding the caste as well. Okay so in 1952 the census in this 1952 census so we had collected this uh, data on the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes and for the first caste census data released in 1931 but after that even we came with recent 2011 caste census but that data had not been yet released. So what is the importance here so why we need this type of uh, census. So first one is India runs world's largest affirmative welfare program. So here for example government is providing reservation for the students in education and reservation for the so and so caste people in the employment opportunities and even government is coming up with upliftment of this uh, downtrodden societies. So for all those things yes we need this data. So if data is absent means government cannot make the informed decisions. Especially government is coming up with reservation in education institutions and as well as government jobs on the basis of caste identities. And if there is absence of fresh data or fresh caste census data, it means caste estimates of 1931, they are being projected for formulating welfare policies in 2021. So if there is no data means yes, it will be, it will be saying that yes, we can't go for continuing of the schemes. Not exactly continuing, but if there is no proper data, so we don't know like whether the targeted people, they are getting the benefits or not. Okay, they are getting the fruits of the schemes or not. So we don't know that. So if there is any changes needs, so government can do some changes according to that data. And the highest reservation ban date according to this Mandal Commission, which said that here we can go for 27 percentage of OBCs. So we have to see whether this 27 percentage of OBCs are present in the population of that so and so state or not. So for all these things, yes, this caste based data is very important. And now let us see next topic it is about the capturing the rains. So this article is talking about vagaries of global climate and here this says that we need all weather insurance so that we can minimize the risk because of this unseasonal rainfalls or uneven rainfalls or high rainfalls or low rainfalls. So this article which says that since 2018 India has reported a deficit monsoon has not reported. Okay, so here for the first time in this year we have this El Nino. That means from 2018 onwards we have La Nina. So La Nina brings good rainfall to India. But this year 2023 which marked El Nino and because of this we have deficit rainfall. We have rainfall deficit. Especially in month of August we had a lot of deficit. But what happened in September month is yes, we got some about good rainfall. So that yes we can say like there is some balance. So here India received 82 centimeters of rainfall nearly 6 percentage which is lower than 89 centimeters that is considered as normal. So normal rainfall is 89 percentage but now in this monsoon season from June to September it is received just 82 centimeters of rainfall. That means we are having the deficit of rainfall. So in the beginning April, there were enough indications that the monsoon would be subdued with an El Nino on the horizon. So even we are having the good protection systems, good early warning system, we have inquiries, okay, we have IMD, etc. And even we have SkyMed, which are the private weather age, weather forecasting agencies. They said that this year we are going to have El Nino, but not La Nina. So between this 2019 and 2022, Indian monsoon was significantly impacted by a phenomena called as La Nina. 
and what happens sometimes because of this lanina we are not only getting the normal rainfall but even beyond this normal rainfall we can get this rainfall under this lanina but what happened this year we have el nino so because of this the most of the areas they received less rainfall and some areas they received a high rainfall because of climate change so whenever the areas which are receiving the high rainfalls we can see the formation of floods and as well as landslides especially in chandigarh haryana and himachal pradesh region and not only that several cities they were left grappling with serious floodings over several days for example you can see hyderabad right so cloud bursts were reported in himachal pradesh in uh, in august okay august month and this article says that yes we are seeing that the episodes of rain, uh, rainfall is changing day by day so it may be because of even anthropological factors so because of this here we have to provide some compensation so we need to have this compensation so this is the thing which mainly said in this article okay we need to invest more in resilient infrastructure and that can be like we have to focus on all weather incidents against increasing of unpredictable vagaries of global climate so this is about this topic and i hope it is very much clear and now let us see next topic it is about the narrative of development and populism so here we have to see about this topic called as populism we have to understand what is concept of populism and even you have to know like how it is undermining the democracy so these are very important okay and this topic is important from gs paper to under polity so now let us see this topic in detail let us try to understand what is this concept called as populism so populism it is nothing but it is a political philosophy so we are focusing on the idea of the people against the privileged elites so here we have people and here we are divided into two types first one is down trodden and next one is privilege privilege means nothing but high class so what happens so because of this privileged or high class people they are getting into power so this down trodden people will be not taken care of so that is the idea of this populism so it is very important because the important concerns of this people that is down trodden people they are not addressed by this elite class people so because of this the populistic movements they form to challenge the establishment and because of this what happened whenever the cause of concern or whenever the problems or challenges of this low society or uh, for example this low grade society or down trodden society they are not addressing means what happened so they will be having a multiple consequences of populism so because of this populism this is a political theory yes it is undermining the democracy now let us see why what are the reasons behind this so first of all is what happen representative institutions will be forming so populism often turn against representative democracy and it is also rejecting this pluralism so in this way it is threatening the democracy and unity in diversity so it will be affecting unity in diversity and as well as democracy for example so elections are coming and we as a people so we will be electing our representative so our representative should take care of us right so as voters so we voted and we make him to win elections that person need to take care of the people but here he is not taking care okay so it is one issue and this one is authoritarianism so populistic movements they are often led by charismatic leaders and they have little internal democracy and accountability so because of this what happened the leaders who are involving in this so they can develop the cult of personality okay so when they came into power they often turn authoritarian now so because of this they will be not taking care of this down trodden people or the lower state of the society and next one is it is against democratic defense so populism it is posing a threat to democracy primarily because it holds the potential of providing the state with a moral status that it otherwise lacks 
so here this is against anti it is it is against democratic defense that means it is anti democratic right so this populism which is facing which is posing the threat to this democracy because it holds potential of providing the state with a moral status and this one is there is also a weak opposition so populist often claim absolute moral superiority and as well as possession of the whole truth and in this way it makes them to reject the legitimacy of the opponent and even erodes the respect for the dignity of political opponents and of minority groups and even it weakens the culture of reasoned debates so here what happens so this populism which is also opposing this superiority only some people are superior but this downtrodden or lower state of society they are minority now so because of this this minority people they will be not asking the questions they are not demanding this majority people so because of this in democracy normally we will be having the rural party that is ruling party next one is opposition party so opposition party will make this ruling party accountable but here in this populism there is no accountability because this people they will be not asking any questions to this people at the higher class or elite people so this is one important thing and next one is majoritarian nationalism so populism populism of the right tends to acquire the form of majoritarian nationalism and even unconstrained by min minority rights thus minority voices they are suppressed and denied fundamental rights so what happen this majority people or elite people they will be not taking care of this lower state are right so because of this the fundamental rights of this minority people they will be suppressed okay and next one is even there will be corruption abuse in this political or on on the politics right so here because of this elite groups they are forming a group and they are not taking care of this minority people so in this context it will leads to political issues so there is a high risk of corruption and as well as abuse of power is seen and next one here is this topic is very important that is regarding counting debts in indian prisons so here you have to see what are the problems faced by this prisons so what are the problems faced by this prisons in india the first and the foremost thing here is there is increasing of number number of prisoners so because of this that led to overcrowding so overcrowding means there is increased carrying capacity so it is over carrying capacity and even why there is increased in this number of prisoners so there is increase under trails so why there is increasing of under trails because of pendency of cases in judiciary okay everything is related here so if if judge who is giving the judgment fast means is there will be no need of under trials to present in the prisons right so if they are accused then only they can be staying in the prisons if they are not accused they can set free so here the problem it is from even judiciary also so judiciary and this prisons they are interconnected i hope you understand so this is the first problem that is the number is increasing that is oh, there is overcrowding of prisons and next one is increasing of under trials so there is no proper sanitation so because of no proper sanitation so infections will be happening and what are the problems so if you can add anything so please let me know in the comment box regarding the problems faced in the prisons especially indian prisons so this article says that in month of august supreme court came up with a committee so this committee on prison reforms so this committee which found that one important reasons for increasing of deaths in prison here is suicides suicides is a leading cause of unnatural deaths so which are the natural deaths so natural deaths is because of aging because of illness 
So apart from this aging and illness, so there is increased number of deaths because of suicides. Okay, so this is the thing which mainly said. And this report said that the number of custodial deaths has been steadily raised since 2019 and 2021. So custodial deaths means if a person who is in custody, investigation is going on. So during that investigation, they will be given third degree treatment or two de second degree treatment. So because of that, also the death will be happening. That type of deaths is called as custodial deaths. Okay, so this report also says that there is increased in number of custodial deaths that is seen increasing by 2019-2021. And because of this custodial deaths, we can see it is also one of the reasons for unnatural death. And even on another hand, natural deaths are also increasing because of aging and illness in the jails or prisons. So if you see some more details, it says that unnatural death includes suicides. For example, suicides means nothing but I am going to commit suicide so that I can live my life. Okay, so I am going to end my life. So here suicide can be done by hanging to fan or by poisoning or they can injure themselves. That is called a self-inflicted injury. Next one is taking of drugs, electrocution, etc. So please don't ask me. So how these people are going to get the drugs? So even in the jails also, the people, prisoners, they will be getting drugs. It is a fact. Okay. So it is the illegal means. And this one here is deaths which happens due to inmates assault by outside elements, even fire, whenever there is negligence or excess and accidental deaths. Okay. And because of even natural calamities like earthquakes, snake bites, drowning, accidental fall, burn injury, drug or alcohol consumption. So all these are some important reasons for the death. So here in light of increasing of suicide cases, NHR that is National Human Rights Commission in June issued an exhaustive 21 page advisory to states highlighting the suicides or rising day by day. Okay, so because of this, we had to take some medical and immediate steps. Okay, so this is about this topic and these are the most important topics from our today's Hindu newspaper. And I want to announce about this course that is main translating course that we are coming up in this Rathod Science Academy. And this course it is going to be started from 9th October 2023. So here in this course, we are going to provide you one year practice of answer writing so this is daily answer writing practice program so we are going to give you detailed schedule so in this schedule so we will be giving you the weekly timetable what you have to study for the next one year and even we are going to give you the micro listing of topics so based on that you will be preparing so daily one question will be given to you and you have to write answer but on sundays you will be having case study or essay and after writing the answer you have to send to our mail so we will be evaluating your answers and even we will be sending you the modal answer for that question so that the first time you will be doing revision while you're studying in that week and second you're writing answer and third you will be checking your evaluated paper and even modal answer so that the perfect revision will be happen and here we are covering entire your GS syllabus which includes GS 1, 2, 3 and 4 and we are also providing the modal answer, written evaluation of your answer and one more special thing is about live classes will be there on every Sunday. So in that live classes we will be having the orientation and we will be clearing your doubts and we will be having online essay writing or case study answering and that will be the two-way interaction it is not like traditional class it will be like a two-way interaction and there what are the doubts you have you can ask me and you can clear your doubts and the cost of this course here is 8200 rupees for one year and if you can't pay this amount in one go you can pay in two installments so if you want to know the further more details regarding this course you can call me on this number 8074765513 and even this is whatsapp number you can also text me on this number so that i can share the details of this course 
and the class will be taken by me itself. So if you are joining these classes, you can talk to me directly. And you could also get mentorship also. Okay, so here the medium is only English. So I will be talking only English. I don't know even Hindi also. Okay, and this course is useful for the beginners and even for the students who already gave the attempts. And this will be excellent. Uh, and you can improve your answer in skills for sure within two to three months after joining this course. Okay, so this is about this thing. And one more thing I want to say is if you want to get this class notes, you can join the telegram channel and that telegram channel link is given in the description box. So I will show you the telegram channel also. So you can join this telegram channel. Okay, so this is Rathal Science classes and there you will be getting this notes every day. And even whenever you are posting the video in YouTube, you will be getting notification in this telegram so that you will be not missing anything. And this is our Rathor's IS Academy YouTube channel. So please do subscribe to this channel. So there you can see different playlist and even we are providing the shorts and live classes also. So you can watch them. And this is our website. So this is a home page. So whenever you are coming to our website for the first time, you have to click on login or register button. So you should not give directly your email id and password you should click on this don't have account and first you have to register so after registering then you will be directed towards this login page again and here you can give your email id and password and you can log in so after login so you can click on this course list and here you can see the wide range of courses that we are offering in this rathors is so if you are weak in single subject so you can also get this single subject module Okay, for example, if you want to go to this history, we have these five modules in this history like ancient history, medieval history, art and culture and world history like that. And here, if you see this uh, geography, in geography you have two different models like Indian geography, world geography. And if you want to watch the demo videos, you can click on this play course so that three videos will be opened and you can watch those three videos without paying a single penny. And if you want to join this foundational course, you can go to last and you can see this is our foundational course and this will be used for 2024 and 2025. Okay, so this is about this foundation course. So in this foundation course, we are providing entire GS syllabus along with essay, which includes prelims test series, prelims booster course, mains answer writing practice and as well as mains test series and the validity of this course is two years. And this is our main translating course, you can join here. Okay, so this is about this entire thing regarding Rathor size. And these are some important articles that appeared in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by this I am concluding. So if you really enjoyed this class, so please hit the like button. Don't forget to like the video and try to share this video even to your friends who are in need. So thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe to this Rathor size Academy.